Hey everyone and welcome back to another Mr. Oldenburg math video. They are completely uncut, unedited, one-shot deals. So I apologize for any errors that happen when I do this. But what we're doing right now is starting a new unit. We're talking about fractions and division. This is going to be an entirely different beast than multiplying. Um, today we're going to discuss a lot of stuff that we've been talking about all year, though. How to set up a division problem and how fractions are division to begin with. Uh, let's not forget one of the first things I told you this year. Whenever you have a fraction sign, right? Hey, look at this, right? Ooh, we remember this guy. It's a division sign. Nothing more than a numerator and a denominator. That's what the little dots stand for. Hey, put a digit here or a number. It's all it's ever been. Pretty cool. Here we go. So today in class we talked about uh, this word problem here. Four people want to share a waffle for breakfast. There are six waffles. How can you share it among four people? Biggest thing that we have to remember is the reading. It's not about the math. The math is easy. It's knowing what to do with the numbers uh, that's really going to matter. So whenever we're thinking about um, dividing with fractions uh, or just dividing in general, we always want to think about the following. What do I have over how it's shared or how many are in a whole? Okay? Um, it's what you're going to have, you know, what you own. Uh, or pieces of over what's in the total. So if we think about a pizza for a second, right? Pizzas are cut in eight slices. So um, let's say, you know, I ate three slices because, you know, I was a little hungry that night. Oops. All right, so I ate three. That's five pieces left, right? So I have five pieces. Out of how many were in the total one pie, that was eight. So it'd be like five-eighths of the pizza left. What did I eat? Three eighths, right? So three out of the eight pieces I ate. Um, remember, to the division sign, instead of saying divided by, you could say out of, because sometimes, especially with fractions, using the correct words will make your life a lot easier. Uh, you'll see that as we do this video. So we know four people want to share six waffles. So what do I have? I know that I have six waffles and I want to share it among four people. So I want to take the six waffles and I want to divide it by four people. Well, I could do this, and I could say that each person's going to get one with a remainder of two out of the four. So if I'm making this into a mixed number, I know each person is going to get one. Oh, let me get my little pointer out. <laughs> one and then two out of four pieces, which if we simplify this, it would be one half. So everyone's gonna get about one and a half waffles. When I look at my, um, my picture over here, I notice, hey, I have six waffles, right? So maybe person one, two, three, and four each get one full waffle. Then I have two waffles left over, right? Well, I need four pieces. I could cut each in half. What's that gonna do? That's gonna say, hey, I have one person, and each half, two over here. You know, I guess I could put the numbers there. That might make it a little bit better. Person one, person two, person three, person four. And that's how they're each getting one and a half. I could also say, let's see how well this eraser works. Um, hmm, I'm gonna test something here. If the picture goes away, I'm sorry. Oh, it did. All right, so let's pretend, here we go, that I still have my six waffles. Here's my six waffles, right? Uh, and then maybe I cut them all up into quarters. Maybe I'm like, all right, well, it's four people. So I'll just cut each one just to be sure. All right, there I went, right? Here I go. Person one, each person's going to get a quarter, right? So here's one. Here's one. Why isn't this drawing? Why is it back on a pointer? I don't want a pointer. Two. This is all one person because one person's getting a quarter of each. If I add these up, I know my denominator is four. So in one whole are four pieces. I have one, two, three, four. There's one whole. Then I have one, two out of four left over. All right? Many different ways to solve this problem. The biggest thing is knowing that when things are shared, you're usually dividing them. 
And to always remember, it's what you have over how it's shared or broken up. Let's take a look at this example. It's got a little bit harder. Tom, Joe, and Sam made clay pots using a total of two rolls of clay. So if I'm thinking about what I have, I have two rolls of clay. How is it being shared amongst three people? Okay, that's actually the answer. Uh, they want to know if they each use the same amount of clay, how much is each going to use? Well, I know I have two rolls of clay, and it's being broken in the thirds. So it's already a fraction. You don't need to make it into a decimal because what are – and by the way, it would also look like this. Um, two, 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 two divided by three, all right? And if I did the actual algorithm, I'd start getting a decimal, wouldn't I? Sure, and we don't want to go there. By the way, it would constantly be this, which is uh, two-thirds to begin with. It's a decimal form, but we're not interested in that right now. Let's get rid of it. One of the things that I want to show you is how to break it up using the model. So we do have two pieces of clay right up here, right? Two pieces of clay. We're breaking each into thirds so people could use it because we have three people. So I'll just take the two, I'll break it into thirds. Okay, well, to me now, this looks like Tom is gonna get one blue and one red, Joe is gonna get one blue and one red, and Sam is gonna get one blue and one red. So what I notice here now is, if I look at what each person's getting, I know that Tom has his one blue, one red. This is one out of the three blue pieces. This is one out of the three red pieces. So together, he would have gotten two thirds of a piece. Okay? Even though they're different colors, um, he has one blue, one red. That's still two thirds of the total amount. All right, so I'm going to do some of the guided practice for you so that way um, you can remember the different types of math we're going to do. We're not going to do number three because I don't really want to work on number lines right now with you. What I do want to talk about is reading. They want to explain how to write three-tenths as a division expression. Well, if we go back to what we said, uh, your numerator will always tell you what you have. Your denominator will tell you how many pieces in it are in a whole. So what I have is 3, and I'm dividing that into 10 pieces, all right? And that's why you're going to get 3 tenths, because you're saying you have 3 pieces of 10. Out of a whole of 10, you have 3 pieces filled. When I talk about writing uh, 2 divided by 5 as a fraction, if I think about it, here's my fraction form, and it's 2 then it's divided by, here's my function sign, 5. You just write it as you read it. So it stays linear. 2, 2, divided, divided by 5, 5. Boom. Stay in order. Um, they want me to write each of these uh, ex uh, fractions as expressions. Again, you read it, you can write it. This says... Let me change the right pen. This says I have 1 divided by 9. So stick with the order. 1 divided by 9. And then here, by the way, these stylus did not make me any neater. Um, I have 7 divided by 8. So again, 7 divided by 8. It's all semantics. Uh, this is where it gets fun. This is where you're going to start paying attention uh, in more detail. So what we have here is five friends are sharing eight apples. So what do I have? I have eight apples. Okay? I have eight apples. And how am I sharing it? I'm sharing it amongst five people. So it's eight divided by five. All right? Now you're going to notice that's an improper fraction. We really can't leave it that way. 
So I have to think, well, okay, uh, if I did the math, five goes into eight one whole time with three left over. So I'm going to have one and three left out of five. So one and three fifths of an apple each, all right? Now words matter, so we would even write of an apple each and each stands for each person. So each person is getting one and three-fifths of an apple. And then finally, let's talk about two friends sharing one bagel. I'm sure you could think about this at lunch. Not so bad. What do we have? We have one bagel, right? All right, here's a bagel. Sharing it between two friends. Now, if you're my friend, this is mine. This is yours, because I'm greedy, and I like to eat. However, you're not sharing it with me. Let's talk about this appropriately. We're going to share it equally, because we really like our friend. So, you're each getting half, because you're going to get one out of two. But if I'm writing this, what do I have? I have one bagel. I'm sharing it among two people. I have half a bagel. All right, so now we're going to talk more about... Um, Actually, this is the same exact problem as the last page now, isn't it? Yeah, well, let's go over it again just so we could talk about um, how we go about doing the problem. So I have, I have an eight-pound bag of potting soil. I'm dividing it evenly among five flower pots, all right? They want to know what's in each pot. So this is eight divided by five. Eight divided by five. If I do the work, five goes into eight once with a remainder of three again. My quotient will tell me what my whole number is. My remainder will tell me what's left out of my divisor, which tells me how many are in one whole. So each pot is getting one and three-fifths pounds of soil. And I know that I skipped some of the pointing things out, or I know I didn't write this underneath, because at this point, I'm pretty sure you know what's going on with that function, and I'm trying to save time on these things, even though they run long anyway. So let's talk about this, and that we'll call it a wrap. Um, how can you write 10 over 3 as a division expression? Well, I would never read it 10 over 3. I would read it as 10 divided by 3. All right? That's my expression. Notice no equal sign. Uh, and then as a mixed number, I'd do the work. I know 3 goes into 10 three whole times, because that gives me 9. And then 10 minus 9 is 1, so I have 1 left over out of the 3 I divided it by. Number 2, suppose three friends want to share 16 posters equally. Okay, what do I have? I have 16 posters. How many friends are sharing it? Three. Now this question I love, because it's saying... Why would your answer be 5 remainder 1 instead of 5 and 1 third? Um, the best reason is this. I do the work. 3 goes into 16, 5 whole times, 1 left out of 3, right? But you have to think about what you're reading. When I reread this question, they want to share what? They want to share 16 posters. What this tells me here is that each person's getting 5 full posters and a third. Here's a poster. Here's a picture of someone on a poster. If I write one third, they're telling me that I'm cutting that in half. So who's the lucky person to get the head, the body, or the feet? You can't share a poster. Not like that, because you'd cut it in the thirds. It's not a poster anymore. And nobody wants one little section of a poster. It doesn't make sense. That's why 5 remainder 1 makes more sense in this situation because each person's going to get 5 full posters and there's one left over. Maybe one will get uh, an extra one or maybe they'll donate one to my classroom. Who knows? The point is you're not going to cut a poster into three pieces and then hang a third of it on your wall. Well, maybe you will, but I wouldn't. Let's talk about this. We need to find uh, 11 divided by 10. So if I write that as a fraction, that's 11 divided by 10. What do I notice? 
I notice that it's an improper fraction. 10 will go into 11 one full time with one left over out of 10. I also see that I have 10 divided by 11. Well, the nice thing about that, it's already a proper fraction. I can leave it. It's 10 divided by 11. All right, more of that fun semantics time. And this is really the key to this lesson. Right now, we're not worried so much about the functions and the actual computation as much as we are learning how to set up the problem and read it correctly. So what we have here are two friends sharing three apples. What do I have? I have three apples. It's all about the words. I have three apples. I'm sharing it two ways. That's three divided by two. If I did the work, two goes into three, one full time with a remainder of one. So I have one whole and one left out of two. So each friend gets one and a half apples. And then finally, I have three students sharing five breakfast bars. I want to know who gets together, buys five breakfast bars, and just has two other friends, and like, hey, man, I got breakfast. Let's eat this. Who does this? I, I don't know. I don't know anyone that does this. Generally, you pretty much eat breakfast beforehand. Maybe it's those high school kids. They do weird things. So what do I have? I have five breakfast bars. I'm sharing it three ways. Three goes into five one time with a remainder of two. One and two-thirds bar each. And where are they getting a knife to cut this thing, right? Or are they biting it to that and then you're sharing germs? Gross. I don't get it. Anyway, guys, I hope that this was uh, helpful to you. I don't have any music queued up today. I'm sorry about that. But I did get through two lessons for you. Uh, if you're looking for this stuff in the book, it's lessons 9-1 and 9-2. Lunch is now over, so I'll be seeing you in a minute. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye-bye.